Researchers identify a key milestone in the evolution of mammals, warm-bloodedness. The origin of warm-bloodedness, a characteristic crucial to the success of the lineage, has been a long-standing mystery in the study of mammalian evolution. To find the answer, researchers examined the ear anatomy of extant and extinct mammals, as well as those closest to them. According to research published recently, the diminished size of semicircular canals, which are tiny tubes filled with fluid that aid in maintaining balance in the inner ear of mammal ancestors, revealed that endothermy, also known as warm-bloodedness, first emerged roughly 233 million years ago, during the Triassic period. Mammaliomorph synapsids, the first organisms to reach this milestone, are not officially categorized as mammals because actual mammals didn't emerge until some 30 million years later. However, they had started to develop characteristics common to mammals. The development of endothermy coincided with the emergence of key components of the mammal body plan, including as whiskers and fur, modifications to the backbone that affected walking, the presence of a diaphragm, and a more mammal-like jaw joint and hearing system. Mammalian endothermy, including that of humans, is a distinctive trait. According to co-lead author and paleontologist Ricardo Arejo of the University of Lisbon's Institute of Plasmas and Nuclear Fusion and co-author of the study that was published in the journal, having a quasi-constant high body temperature regulates all our actions and behaviors, from food intake to cognition, from locomotion to the places where we live. Mammal bodies have high metabolisms that enable them to regulate their body temperatures independently of their environment. Animals with cold blood, like lizards, use techniques like sunbathing to become warm. Mammalian endothermy emerged during a pivotal point in evolution, around the time that pterosaurs and dinosaurs, creatures that would go on to dominate ecosystems for a very long time, started to emerge. Endothermy provided benefits. Increase forage area, run longer and faster, be more active throughout the year and during longer stretches of the circadian cycle. There are countless options. But all of this comes at a high price. Increased food, forage, and so forth are necessary for more energy. You must strike a delicate balance between the energy you consume and the energy you expend, according to Arejo. Cold-blooded species gave rise to the mammalian lineage, some of which had unusual body designs, such as the sailback dimetrodon, combining features of both reptiles and mammals, such as the arrangement of some jaw muscles. In contrast to a more drawn-out, slow process, endothermy arose quite quickly, possibly in less than a million years, according to paleontologist and research co-lead author Romain David of the Natural History Museum in London. Pseudotherium argentinus, a creature that has some resemblance to a weasel, was first discovered in Argentina around 231 million years ago. The placentals, marsupials, and monotremes, three today's mammalian groups, were descended from the later true mammals. According to paleontologist and study co-author Ken Angioczyk of the Field Museum in Chicago, given how central endothermy is to so many aspects of the body plan, physiology, and lifestyle of modern mammals, when it evolved in our ancient ancestors has been a really important unsolved question in paleontology. It has been difficult to pinpoint the beginning of endothermy using fossils. We cannot insert thermometers into your pet dimetrodon's armpit, Arejo remarked. The inner ear offered a remedy. Temperature affects the viscosity, or runniness, of any fluid including the fluid of the inner ear. Since this fluid is thicker and cooler in cold-blooded species, bigger channels are required. Warm-blooded animals have smaller semicircular canals and less viscous ear fluid. Comparing semicircular canals in 341 species, 64 extinct and 243 living, was done by the researchers. This demonstrated that endothermy developed millions of years later than some earlier hypotheses. Before taking over after the catastrophic extinction event 66 million years ago, mammals had minor roles in ecosystems dominated by dinosaurs. 
Mammals and birds are warm-blooded animals in the modern animal kingdom. Perhaps speculating that the start of endothermy in our ancestors may have ultimately contributed to the creation of the Giza pyramids or the invention of the smartphone is interesting, but Arejo said it was far-fetched. These human accomplishments would probably not be conceivable if our ancestors had not learned to become independent of environmental temperatures. Size differences between inner ears, in gray, of warm-blooded mammaliomorphs, on the left, and cold-blooded, earlier synapsids, on the right. Inner ears are compared for animals of similar body sizes. Warm-bloodedness, also called homoeothermy, also spelled homeothermy, in animals, the ability to maintain a relatively constant internal temperature, about 37 degrees Celsius, 99 degrees Fahrenheit, for mammals, about 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, for birds, regardless of the environmental temperature. The ability to maintain an internal temperature distinguishes these animals from cold-blooded, or poikilothermic, animals, which usually have about the same temperature as their environment. Warm-blooded animals are able to remain active in situations in which cold-blooded ones cannot. Body temperatures of homoeotherms are kept at a constant value by regulatory mechanisms that counteract the effects of the external environment. In cold environments, regulatory mechanisms maintain body temperature by increasing heat production and decreasing heat loss. In hot environments, regulatory mechanisms maintain body temperatures by increasing heat loss. Within a neutral range of several degrees, 27 degrees to 31 degrees Celsius, 81 degrees to 88 degrees Fahrenheit, for man, neither heat gain nor heat loss is necessary to maintain body temperature. Shivering, a regulatory mechanism of many warm-blooded animals, increases heat production. Hibernation, another mechanism used by certain warm-blooded animals, decreases heat loss by means of a general slowing down of bodily functions. Panting and perspiring are mechanisms for increasing heat loss. Cold-bloodedness, also called poikilothermy, ectothermy, or heterothermy, the state of having a variable body temperature that is usually only slightly higher than the environmental temperature. This state distinguishes fishes, amphibians, reptiles, and invertebrate animals from warm-blooded, or homoeothermic, animals, birds and mammals. Because of their dependence upon environmental warmth for metabolic functioning, the distribution of terrestrial cold-blooded animals is limited, with only a few exceptions, to areas with a temperature range of 5 to 10 degrees to 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, 41 to 50 degrees to 95 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. For cold-blooded animals living in the Arctic seas, temperatures may range from below 0 degrees Celsius to 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Poikilotherms do maintain a limited control over internal temperature by behavioral means, such as basking in sunlight to warm their bodies.